an antique sewing machine, forgotten and alone. I touched her rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I oiled her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired her hurts and years of use, and let her sew again. So this is where the exciting part begins, out here in my soon-to-be shop. And my work table here is right now a board between two chairs with paper on top. But it works, especially for something this messy. So what I'm going to start doing is I have stripper in here, and I just have it in there because it's easier for me to dip my brush in the jar than in the can. I have stripper, my wire brushes. Um, I'm going to be doing, working on the machine first, I will be bringing out the wheel and the little mechanism um, part that needs to get painted on the bobbin winder. For, for right now, I'm just going to do this. So here is my process. First, as is, I will, using my brush dipped in there, put a thick coat all over all the painted surfaces on top. And I'm going to work on the top of this machine first. Once this is completely done, I'll flip it over and do the bottom. It's just easier that way. So I'll coat it, walk away for about 15 minutes or so, and then come back with a wire brush, wiggle whatever is loose, loose, wipe it all off with a paper towel, coat it again, and walk away for another 10 or 15 minutes. You know, just pretty much all afternoon long. Okay, so right now she is thoroughly covered with goop, as you can see, lots and lots of goop. So I am going to go ahead and leave her here for a bit and set my timer on my watch for 15 minutes and we'll be back and see what it looks like. In case you're wondering what kind of stripper I'm using, it's just this ancient can here of hardware store clean strip stripper, you know found everywhere in the US, but it's just basic. And when, this is a very old can, as you can see, dented. Um, when I first started doing machines, it probably was about that full, and I have completely cleaned and stripped, oh, this will be my fourth machine this time. And so um, you can see, I poured it from here into that jar, but there's still a little bit in here. So it goes a pretty long way. So um, that's just what I'm using. I'm sure other brands would work just as well, but just thought I would let you see. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. I just came back in, put on one of my gloves so I can work on this. And you can see paint is already starting to kind of bubble up. It's going to take several, several attempts, but look at that. On the top, just this one is able to get down to the main layer. Sometimes it takes me like five or six, five or six different layers of all of this to go through. So basically what I do is I've got my brush. This is a steel brush. I have a brass one too, which is a little softer. And move that paper towel. I just kind of go around and everywhere that I put the stripper, I rub my little wire brush over it just to loosen up everything that can come loose. Okay? I'm not pushing really hard, I'm just kind of rubbing it, you know. And on this machine, it was so bad in here. I actually put some on this part, and I think that's going to help. So once I get it all rubbed loose like this. I'm going to go through a lot of paper towels, um, but I get a paper towel, rub everything off that will come off like that. Scrape it up one more time, rub it down one more time, and then put down a whole nother coating 
wait 15 minutes and you know lather rinse repeat and one last thing is while I go away I keep my brushes soaking in this little cup little flower cup and it has mineral spirits in it so that while I'm gone it'll get some of the paint off the wire brush so that when I come back in I can just kind of tap it off and start up again because the brush will get really really goopy and filthy if you don't hello so this is the next day and um, I brought the machine in because pretty much the head part itself is pretty much stripped. There's still some stuff on the bottom that I'm not going to stress over. Um, I am going to sand it. I am going to be primering over this and everything. So that little bit down there doesn't, doesn't bother me. But before I can even get to the primering stage, let me tell you my process. So there's still little bitty pieces. I'm going to do my finish in here. Um, with my Dremel, I have a flat wire brush, I have using a, a wire brush on my Dremel kind of like this, I can get in and clean out all of my little holes and everything because when I was using this stripper a whole bunch of gunk got pushed into all these little orifices that I need to get cleaned out and there's some little places down around the edge here that I wasn't able to get to with the wire brush out in the shop to clean off the paint. So I'm just going to give this a really good once over. Um, before I brought it inside, I wiped the entire machine down with a cloth. Hang on a second. Ooh, new light. With a cloth with some mineral spirits on it just to kind of neutralize what's going on with the stripper and everything and give me a nice clean surface to start working on. So, as always, I need to find my safety goggles, which are over here. Okay, so at this point, let me see if I can shine the light so you can see, I've got her pretty much cleaned off. I've got all my issues taken care of here. And on the underneath, this bar that I could not remove, you know, without damage, um, I have pretty much cleaned it up and it is moving extremely freely. So what I'm going to be doing next, this, you know, this one is trapped here, that stays. Um, what I'm going to be doing next is masking this off to get ready for primering it. So I am going to completely mask off these pieces that I could not remove, this and this one. Um, I'm going to fill up this cavity with paper towels, all kinds of things. So let me get that going and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so she is all stuffed up, masked up. Oops, except for this. I need to do that little part there. Got the emblem covered over. I need to cover up this number. Good thing to double check. And I still need to uh, mask around the shaft here. What I'm going to be painting her with is a, it's called a filler primer. And the reason is even if at this stage they look very, very smooth, um, the original paint that they put on these things, it wasn't actually a paint. It was, it was a, what is it, like an asphalt lacquer kind of something or other dip. And it was very, very thick, so it would mask all the imperfections. But I've done enough of these to know that even if it looks really smooth, every single little, little divot is going to show. So, after I mask up my last remaining parts, of course, I'm going to give her a really good coat of that and then once that is dry, bring her back over here to once again in the good light, make sure everything is good before I go for her final color. All right, it's been several hours since I painted her and so now it's time to bring her inside and do some sanding, sanding just to smooth everything out because uh, this first, first filler um, it is a filler, so it'll go in the pores, but it's also a little bit rough. So I have two different sandpapers. What is this? This is, says one P180, 
and then I have a super super fine P800 so I'm gonna work with this one first just lightly sanding it and you can feel it as you go that it the surface becomes a lot smoother just after a light sand once I get it all nice and smooth then I'll come back with this one just to give it a nice polish ooh so that makes it super nice and then it'll be ready to get its color okay so I have it where it feels smooth I can tell it's not going to be perfect and by perfect I mean a flawless paint job um, I have filled in and sanded and filled in and sanded but let me show you what I'm talking about okay so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here but it does feel very smooth so as I was working I'd pull out my little dealies and then pop them back in when I go to paint my blue I'm going to be pulling most of these out um, I just had them in here for my primer because I didn't want a super lot of buildup around these holes but you can see when they're in there they leave a circle a little ring so just to make sure that um, when they're painted with the blue I don't have that come on focus um, I am going to be pulling out all of my little q-tips here up here this one is threaded this one is not I'm going to try to cover it, but not spray a whole lot inside of there, but I want to make sure I get the blue all the way around that. Up here, there is a, a plate that goes over this front area. Um, I am going to leave these in there because this will be inside the plate, and I want to make sure that these two holes don't get any buildup in there because um, that would make it really hard for the those rods to go up and down so anyhow what I'm going to do right now is wipe it down with my flannel cloth to try to get any dust that's remaining here off make sure there's no spots that I missed in my sanding and polishing okay so welcome to the next day I'm just wiping it down after all my sanding to get any dust off because I decided that this was not good enough and I was not convinced I was going to be able to get all of these I don't even know if you can see because they are minor um, it looks like where some kind of a grinder or something went over this when it was being made um, just those little striations and I want to get those off I want as smooth as possible of a under here. you might be able to see it here a little bit better where I did not completely sand it off see all those little bitty lines that's what I want to get off so I got my touch up bondo here and I need to go downstairs and get a little plastic scraper that I can use to even it out I have never used this before so it looks pretty easy it looks like you just put a little bit on and um, even it out smooth it on with a scraper very thinly let it dry 20 minutes and sand it with a fine sandpaper so we're going to give it a shot okay so I am going to pop the seal on here it is red okay got my little scraper which I cut up from a kitchen container you know what I'm just going to smooth it on with my finger a bit first to get it where I want it and then I can come back with my scraper to fill it in I believe at least this is my thought right now you know you are seeing me do this for the very first time so if I do that and then come back with my scraper I can see where it's going to fill in all those little crevices so that's pretty cool I think my scraper is too wide though I'm going to trim this down so it's not quite as big so in my vast history of using this product on sewing machines which now is about ooh, probably 10 minutes let me tell you my application method of choice is to put a little bit on my gloved finger and use that to push it hard into crevices and smear it on like a really crazy clay facial mask okay 
and then once I can feel like oh that's nice and smooth and it's in the crevices then I'm coming back with my scraper and pulling off the excess because it does dry fairly fast you know and I don't want a huge buildup of this I just want it to go inside of those crevices that are making it look you know slightly uneven and I think doing it this way I'll have less to sand off um, once this layer dries you know I'm not adverse to sanding I like sanding but I don't want to be sanding all day you know what I mean okay so this is what she's looking like right now when I go to sander these stripes where I scraped will hopefully go away I had to do thicker right here there was a spot right here that I needed to put thicker so that's going to have more sanding but I think she will be okay um, I did her little front side here on the back all this right here I left this purposely raw um, there's not a whole lot of those you know marks here and um, no one's going to see it that closely and I kind of want to be able to see the difference between what I did do the bondo on and what I didn't you know for learning for future now the bottom plate is much much smoother um, so I'm not worrying about this part down here this machine was cast in two different pieces this is cast separately from here and on the bottom you can see the screws where it's, a, it's attached I'm not taking those off I do not want to take that off um, but that's why this this metal is different than this metal so I need to let this dry it says at least 20 minutes um, at least because I want to make sure that this part right here is dry and I'm guessing it's like a facial mask where you wait until everything is a uniform light color that's what I'm going with it said thin coats wait at least 20 minutes so I will be back shortly okay so I think I have her sanded down I actually had to after I did the coat you saw I came back and there was a couple extra spots I wanted a little extra coverage and then I went downstairs and got a 400 grit sandpaper um, to deal with this area because the 800 was honestly more like polishing than sanding but she's pretty smooth right now it's not going to be perfect but she's pretty darn good so I need to turn on my vacuum vacuum up all of my dust really quick wipe her down so she doesn't have any dust on her and then she's going to get ready to paint well I just deleted footage on my camera of me over in my painting room painting the first couple coats onto the machine. Um, I changed my mind on the color so I guess it'll be a surprise for you next time I film over there. Uh, I've got the machine has a few coats on it. I've got the wheel. Um, I had masked off the centers and the outside edge of, of the big wheel and I have it getting painted. So I'm going to take a little time carefully disassemble the bobbin winder mechanism um, and take this belt guard piece and well this bobbin winder mechanism doesn't have a painted piece a lot of times on a lot of them this piece here is uh, painted cast iron but it is steel so let me just get it off of here take this over to the shop you know be stripping it and getting it ready to paint and then I can work on cleaning up this mechanism spring comes over this and looks like there's a little hole in here that it goes into and the opposite side that's bent like an L is just resting here on the back of that bracket now when I took this piece off 
There's usually a spring in here, and those are the holes for the spring to adjust the tension. There was no spring in there. So when I put it back together, I'll have to, to figure out what's going on there. So this whole piece is off now. I'm just going to set it aside. And so next time I go out to my, my paint shop, I'll take this with me so I can start putting stripper on it and um, removing all of this old paint. Look, there's a tiny remnant of the old decal there. But this piece, this whole thing, you know, you can tell is very, very dirty. So cleaning it up is going to be a very good thing. So I'm going to go ahead while I have the camera on so I can document everything. I'm going to finish taking this mechanism apart. I try to keep the associated spring with its associated um, components here. So that goes with that, that goes with that. This does spin easily, so that is good. Okay. Now on this, I want to show you this wire of this spring wraps over. It just wraps around that little piece with the fork on it, okay? And the back part of that, there should be a hole in here that there's the, the back end of this wire of this spring is stuck into. And this is coming off fairly easily. Like I said, pre-soaking it in oil definitely helped. So be careful taking your pieces off so that those little springs don't go shooting out. Okay, so this piece is off. Now when I pull this out, we should be able to see where it is stuck in. Oh man, the grease has it just really fused in there. Well, I can see that it is in the farthest hole up towards the top here. Um, it's just glued in. Let me get a screwdriver that I can put underneath this bottom of the spring and just try to, to wiggle it out. Okay, I think it's coming loose now. Alright, so this post of that spring was in the very top hole up here. Okay, again, there's three holes because, sorry, there's three holes because you can adjust the tension, and this spring was in the very top one up here. Okay, very messy, but that's okay. That's why we're here is to clean it up. You usually have to take the nut off the back. It has a square nut, so in that, once I got it cracked so it was a little bit loose, this just comes off. This screw should come out easily now. Let me see if I can just push it through here. There it goes. Yeah. Once you get the nut off, it should just pull through. So now I'm going to take this little cam off the top. So let me change my bit. It should come off, but it looks like it's a single unit. I'm going to have to play with that with my wire brush because these usually are two separate pieces, but it's looking like it was welded together, so that might just be the dirt. I'll, I'll worry about that in a moment. And finally, this shaft I am leaving on. I'm just going to clean it in place and get all of this stuff cleaned up just like that. Alrighty, so I think the paint should be about dry. And it is looking pretty good. Let me tell you what I had to do with this because it was a little bit frustrating. Let me set her on the table so we can see. Okay, so this is the paint that I used. Um, 
over my primer and everything. Ocean Mist Gloss. Okay, so I put a couple coats on and, and it came out grainy. And that was really, really frustrating. So I let, hang on a second, my cat's screaming. So what I did is I let that grainy coat completely dry for a little over 24 hours. And I came in and I sanded it with this 400 grit sandpaper. It's, it's a very lightweight sandpaper, just to take off the roughness. Um, it didn't make it 100% gloss smooth, but it took off all the graininess, and that's fine. So then shook up the can, because I couldn't leave it that way. So after that, wiped it all down, got all the dust off of it, hung it back up, shook up the can again, sprayed it, and the next coat came out really nice. So if you look, I don't even know if you can tell, it is a glossy coat, but it's like gloss over a slight texture, which isn't bad. It's different. It's not bad. It looks very rugged. Um, so I'm happy with it, but it's really interesting because like on the wheels, in the wheel guard, so I can get an angle where you can see, it did come out super glossy on here. So I'm not too sure what was going on. I looked online, nobody knows for sure. It could be temperature, it could be humidity, it could be the way I shook the can. It could be that mercury is in retrograde, I don't know. It seems like nobody knows why things happen, when they happen, but then you keep looking and they give, well, you can do X, Y, Z to try to make it better. So anyhow, this has been in here drying for a couple days since my last coat. I think it's pretty safe to bring it inside now. Now, um, I would not consider this paint to be fully cured for at least a week. So I still need to be pretty delicate with handling it because until it's 100% cured, you're more apt to get a scratch or something if you hit it on something hard. So anyway, let me get these pieces and the little guard, which is still up here. And look, she is looking beautiful. You see how glossy that is? So I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. And it is lovely. And I'm excited about her. And you can see I have more furniture in here now. We're slowly building the workshop. So anyhow, um, let me take her inside and next time we'll start putting her decals on. Okay, welcome back. And at this point, hopefully you can see she is painted. I've pulled off her masking and I am ready, hopefully, to go ahead and put her decals on. So what I'm going to be using are the Sphinx decals, lovely Sphinx decals. I got the two color ones. There is a three color option that I think has red included. Mine is more of a bronze and gold option. And um, these are the ones from Keeler Sales. I've used his decals a couple other times and they seem to be pretty nice quality. So. If you are interested, uh, this, this is that, Keeler Sales, and that is his information, okay? So, in with the package of decals, he also includes a sample page so that you can figure out what is going on. It's basically your decals, it just has wording on it, so of course... You won't put these on your actual machine, but you can see how your machine is going to react to them. So um, I am just going to cut to this little one out right here and practice on it. So the decals themselves, I usually want to trim fairly close to the actual design. And these, I should be able to pull it off. What I'm gonna do is actually put this on the very back of the machine, 
just to see how the machine takes it. Because like I was telling you before, I did end up with a very, very slight amount of texture, which was un unfortunate. After I brought the machine in and was pulling off all of the masking, I did um, lightly sand her again with a 400 grit sandpaper um, just to try to smooth it down some, but I just kind of want to see back here on the back how, how the machine's going to react to it. So um, just right back here I'm going to put it, like I said, I'll be able to pull it off again soon. Um, I just want to see if, if I'm going to have any trouble or if I need to sand a little bit more. Okay, so this is my little sample I just put on, and I am not seeing any trouble whatsoever. So that is very, very good. I'm really, really glad that I'm able to do this little tester first before I cut out my real one. So, before it gets glued on too tightly and everything is still wet, I'll go ahead and peel it off. And I want to do one quick wipe down of my entire machine with a little bit of my window cleaner and a paper towel just to make sure there's no oils or surface dust or anything left over from my sanding. So I'm just going to show you the procedure on one of these uh, decals. What I do for one, I'll pretty much be doing for all of them. I cut the decal out fairly closely to where it is here, giving myself just a little bit of room around it. And then the place that I'm going to be affixing it to, he suggested a little window cleaner, so I'm going to do that. I put my decal in a little tray of water. I'm just going to leave it there for about 15 to 30 seconds. And then once it's soaked there, I'm going to set it over here onto the surface where I want it. And I'm doing the center one because that's very dramatic. Okay, so I'm going to set my decal where I want it to be. And at this point, the decal is very loose from the paper backing. And I should be able to, holding the decal in place, pull the paper backing out from behind. Like so. And then I have a clean paintbrush that I can use to just smooth it out, smooth out all the liquid from behind it, make sure that it is exactly centered the way I want, and just slowly work that out. And as I push the liquid out, I can dab it off and dry it with my paper towel. Okay, and there it is. So I don't know that I can get closer on top of it, but you get the idea. Like I said, this is the two color version. If you get the three color version, which is I think like $20 more than this one, um, you have a little bit of red decal. But I wasn't too sure what color scheme I was going with, so I thought that this the, the gold and bronze would work well. And I think that that actually matches with the little medallion really well. So using the same process and referencing a photo online to make sure I get them placed in the proper place. I'm going to go ahead and finish up making my decals. Alright, so this is what I have at this point. I have tried to follow pictures finding on the internet of Sphinx decal locations um, on a 15, 30 and uh, this is as close as I could come. I did have a few extras in my, my envelope that um, I didn't have a place for on here. And I'm thinking that there's probably um, maybe one or two that would go on the hand wheel if you have that option. I also have this one oops, that went up on top of the belt guard piece. So that is there. So I just stuck my extra ones in a little envelope to save for later. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you this, looking at the pictures online of the other ones, it seems like there's like a greenish layer of something that gave a lot more detail than I have. Like, like yes, I can see the face and there's a 
little dot right there. Um, coming around curved areas was very difficult to get when when you're going around a curve and you have a big flat piece it's hard to get the little creases out so I might play with my exacto knife and try to get some of that solved but we'll see um, but what I was going to say is, I was looking online at some of the older um, decals, and it seemed like there was a lot more de detail in the faces of the Sphinx and things, and that might have been because that third color that I did not opt into. And um, it might be red on one, but it looked like that third color is green on some of the ones online. I don't even know. I don't even know. I think it's beautiful. I, um, I'm definitely happy with it. I just, uh, I just wish that I had a little bit more detail in the faces, but honestly, by tomorrow, I'll probably forget all about that and get ready to move on with the next step. Okay, I wanted to show you, I just clear coated this machine and it took me a while because I wanted to wait for the paint to cure for a full week. Plus, it's a new product, and so I did it off camera because I had no idea how it was going to work. And this is what I was using, this diamond finish, very expensive, but it is supposed to dry to a rock-hard, non-yellowing, direct-to-metal whatever. It's um, for auto use, but I put it on with a brush, and I think it's actually really, really nice. I wanted to find a clear coat that would protect the decals, protect the paint, and not risk changing color. So I gave a coat to the wheel, to the belt guard, and to the machine, and I think it looks lovely. So I'm just gonna let her sit here and totally dry and cure, and that will be it for this video. Next time, we'll put her back together. I found an antique sewing machine Forgotten and alone I touched her rusty wheel And knew I'd take her home I brought her to my farm In an Amish neighborhood Where simple living's valued She'd be loved and understood I put her on a treadle stand I coaxed her wheel to turn I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern I cleaned her and I oiled her Showed her off to all my friends Repaired her hurts and years of use And let her sew again